Hello, let's discuss time dilation measured by different types of clocks. This is the traditional views of time and clock. Time is real and unique in one reference frame. If time in one reference frame slows, then every physical phenomenon in that reference frame slows, and vice versa. How time transforms depends on theory of relativity, irrespective to what types of clocks are used to measure it. Clock measures the proper time in its reference frame. This is the outline. First, we discuss the working principle clocks. Then we discuss atomic clock, pendulum clock, and the two clocks version of twin paradox. After that, we study the two types of clocks based on quantum field theory and curve space time. Then we study atomic clock versus pendulum clock. At last, we discuss the question: What is time? Clocks are mechanical or electronic devices that keep the track of time by counting the number of periodic phenomena occurred. So, spring clock counts the number of oscillations completed by the mass. Pendulum clock counts the number of swings, and the pulsar clock counts the number of the rotations. The interval between the two successive physical phenomena occurred is called the period of clock. Which is the basic unit of time interval that the clock can display. The clock works as a special instrument to record the number of periodic phenomena occurred. The time interval is equal to this number multiplied by the period. A time dilation experiment conducted by the two identical clocks. The period of two clocks are set with the same value. The time difference measured by two clocks. It just a difference of two numbers of phenomena occurred, counted by the two clocks respectively. So in summary, all clocks are devices that count the number of physical phenomena occurred. Since time measured by a clock equals to its period, multiplies the number counted by a clock. The period of two identical clocks is fixed at the same value. The time difference measured by two clocks is just a difference between the two numbers counted by the two clocks. So this is the atomic clock. Atomic clocks count the number of electronic oscillations, which is in resonance with the frequency of the transition of the atom. We have two identical atomic clocks A and B. When an electronic oscillation is counted, the two clocks will display that one second has passed. Therefore, the period for both of the two atomic clocks is set as t equal to one divided by n second. This period is fixed by the clock itself, and the value is artificially fixed when the clock is built. So what does this mean? Suppose I am carrying an atomic clock. My job is just doing the counting. Once I count one electronic oscillation, one divided by n second will be displayed on the screen of the atomic clock. Therefore, the period of each oscillation is fixed as one divided by n second by the clock itself. Regardless of where it is, how fast it is moving, or whether it is accelerating or not, it just keeps adding this number to the total time displayed on the screen. But each time one oscillation is counted, A is on a planet with stronger gravity, and B is on a planet with weaker gravity. After some time, we compare the time measured by two clocks. Assume that the time displayed by clock A and clock B. Are sixty minutes and sixty-one minutes, respectively. This just indicates that the number of the electronic oscillations counted by clock A and clock B are three thousand six hundred n and three thousand six hundred sixty n, respectively. And the ratio between the time measured by two clocks is just the ratio between the two numbers counted by the two clocks. Therefore, the time dilation is given by this formula. So this number is just the number of oscillations counted by clock A. It multiplies its period. It's the time displayed by clock A, and likewise for clock B. Since the period of two clocks are fixed at the same value t equal to one divided by n, so it cancels. Therefore, the ratio between the two numbers counted by the two clocks respectively is just the time dilation result. So this is a pendulum clock. 
where two pendulum clocks A and B, A the hours and B the moon. The gravitational field strains hours is stronger than A the moon. As a result, the pendulum A swings faster than clock B. So the number of swings recorded by clock A is bigger than the number recorded by clock B. For time dilation experiment, the time difference recorded by two clocks is just the difference of two numbers of phenomena occurred, counted by the two clocks respectively. This is in contradiction with general relativity, which predicts time hours is slower than time on the moon. Ellis and Bob are twins. They have two identical atomic clocks, AA and BA, and two identical pendulum clocks, AP and BP. Alice carrying pendulum clock AP and atomic clock AA stays on planets with strong gravity. In the meantime, Bob carrying pendulum clock BP, atomic clock BA stays in a spaceship. The gravitational field experienced by Bob in the spaceship is much weaker than the gravitational field experienced by Alice. Therefore, clock AA is much slower than clock BA while clock AP is much faster than clock BP. So the two clocks give opposite readout. Then the question is, who would age faster, Alice or Bob? Based on two atomic clocks, Alice is younger. However, based on two pendulum clocks, Bob is younger. Moreover, the aging process may be a mix of a vast range of microscopic and microscopic physical phenomena involving both atoms' vertical movements influenced by gravity and the atomic transitions or radiations. The physical process of vertical movements become faster with a stronger gravitational field, while the physical process of atomic radiation becomes slower. We don't know which physical process is dominating the aging process, so we cannot make judgments just based on the two clocks. At this stage, we would like to make more comments on the relation between passage of time with the physical processes. Since all clocks are just devices counting the occurrence of physical phenomena, including pendulum clock, some people may argue that the pendulum clocks do not measure time dilation in relativity because its working mechanism is not related with the passage of time. According to such arguments, actually we already make an agreement that slowing of some physical phenomena is because some interactions exerted on the physical phenomena counted by the clock. Then we all agree that strong gravity cannot make all physical phenomena become slower. Therefore, how can we prove that a strong gravity can make the aging process of our human body slower? Or what makes us to believe that the aging process of our organism is related with the passage of time, while the pendulum clock is not related with the passage of time? How do we distinguish which physical processes are related with the passage of time and which are not related with the passage of time? How can we prove that the atomic clock is related with the passing of time? It seems that we have asked too many questions. These questions may lead to one simple answer. All physical processes have nothing to do with the passing of time. They become slower or faster because of some physical interactions, not because time becomes slower or faster. For example, while I wave my arm back and forth, the frequency of the waving has slowed down. Is it because time has slowed down? Isn't it because the strength of my arm is weakened? Also, while I'm jogging, the speed of jogging slows down. Is it because time has slowed down? Isn't it because the strength of my legs is weakened? Furthermore, we proved that the atomic clocks become slower in a stronger gravitational field is because the stronger gravity makes the periods of atomic transitions larger. Suppose there are two identical hydrogen atoms A and B, 
located at two different locations, xa and xb respectively, in curved spacetime. xa and xb are two locations far away with each other. In the vicinity of location xa, the Lagrangian density of quantum electrodynamics in the curved spacetime can be given as this formula. So this is the direct field, the direct matrix, and the covariant derivative. This is the electron's mass, electron's charge, and the rest are the electromagnetic vector potential fields. So this subscript A here just indicates that these quantities are written in the vicinity of location XA. And all the above quantities depend on local metric value GA. From this Lagrangian LA, we can basically describe all the physical phenomena occurring at the location of hydrogen atom A. We can calculate the atomic energy levels and the motion of atom A in curved space time. From this reference, you can find some detailed information on how to derive the Hamiltonian of hydrogen atom from the Lagrangian density of quantum electrodynamics. In the vicinity of location XB, the Lagrangian density of quantum electrodynamics in curved space time can be written as this formula. The subscript B here just indicated that these quantities are written in the vicinity of location XB. All these quantities depend on the local metric value GB. Likewise, from the Lagrangian LB, we can basically describe all the physical phenomena occurring at the location of hydrogen atom B. We can calculate the atomic energy levels and the motion of the atom B in curved space time. Now we assume that the changing rate of GA equals to the changing rate of GB. Since the changing rate of the metric is related with the geodesic in general relativity, which describes how objects move in curved space time. Therefore, if the changing rates of two metrics are the same, then two atoms A and B are moving with the same speed and accelerations in the vicinity of their locations LA and LB respectively. Therefore, the two pendulum clocks at the two locations LA and LB will be synchronized. Since all the differences between the mathematical forms of the two Lagrangians LA and LB is caused by the difference between the two metrics GE and GB. If the values of two metrics at the two locations are equal, then the two Lagrangians will have the same mathematical form at the two locations LA and LB. As a result, the two Hamiltonians of the two hydrogen atoms will have the same mathematical form since the Hamiltonians are derived from the two Lagrangians. Therefore, the energy levels of the two hydrogen atoms will be the same, so the period of the two atomic clocks will be the same. The two atomic clocks at the location Xa and Xb will be synchronized. So in summary, the working principle of two clocks are controlled by two different factors. For the atomic clock, the value of the metric influences its period, which determines the ticking rate of the time measured by the clock, while the period of the pendulum clock is determined by the gravitational acceleration g, which is related with the changing rate of the metric. An atom free falls in a gravitational field while emitting a photon. Free falling and radiation are two different physical phenomena influenced by two different factors. One factor is the changing rate of the metric, and the other one is the value of the metric. For more information on the working principle of atomic and pendulum clock, please refer to this reference too. This is the electromagnetic pulse counted by atomic clock. The period of pulse is determined by the value of the metric. Since GE mu v and JB mu v at the two locations, XA and XB, are not equal. The periods of the two atomic clocks are not equal. So we can see clock B is faster than clock A. Similarly, for two pendulum clocks, 
The period of pendulum curves is determined by the changing rates of the metric. Since the changing rates of the two metrics at the two places are not equal, therefore, the periods of two clocks are not equal. So we can see clock A is faster than clock B. In summary, even if we fix the reference frame, the experiments of time dilation measured by different types of clocks may become different. These two clocks are in the reference frame A, and these two clocks are in the reference frame B. As you can see, the atomic clock B is faster than atomic clock A, while pendulum clock B is slower than pendulum clock A. Therefore, even if we fix the reference frame, the time dilation effects measured by different types of clocks may give opposite result. The outcome depends on the working principle of the clock itself and what factors influence its ticking rate. In fact, some clocks do not measure probe time as we discussed earlier. For any clocks such as atomic clocks, optical clocks, pendulum clocks, pulse clocks, or other timekeeping tools, they are just an instrument used to record the number of periodical phenomena. It has its own working principle, and the slowing of time is not the cause of slowing of the clock. For example, a pendulum clock becomes faster in stronger gravitational field only because the strong gravity makes the pendulum swing faster, not because the time becomes faster. Likewise, the atomic clock becomes slower in stronger gravitational field is because the energy levels between the ground state and the first excited state atoms becomes smaller, so the period of clock becomes larger not because time becomes slower either. So you can watch this video for the proof in details. Time itself is not a force or an interaction that can affect the operation of devices or other physical phenomena. So it cannot make any physical process faster or slower by itself. So what is time? Physicists never directly measured the space-time itself. Instead, only the behavioral particles and the interactions among physical objects could be measured. Einstein field equations are not a complete theory without a statement that the physical object's motion follows geodesics. It is well known that general relativity is a theory to describe the movement of objects in the presence of other objects. And Einstein field equations can be treated as an intermediate step that involves the structure of space-time, which can be regarded as a mathematical tool. Even if for the gravitational wave detection experiments, physicists can only measure the changing of the trajectory of photons due to the influence of distant black holes, and the gravitational waves just provide a mathematical model to explain this phenomena. Time itself is a mathematical parameter to describe physical phenomena, and it only lives in mathematics and can never be detected. It does not make its own existence independently of physical objects. In other words, it becomes meaningless when it is divorced from the physical phenomena. So in summary, some physical processes are influenced by the values of the 16 elements of the metric tensor while other physical processes are influenced by the changing rates of the 16 elements of the metric tensor. Time is slower in stronger gravitational field predicted by general relativity does not indicate how the physical processes is slower. Time is a parameter to describe the physical phenomena. Whether it becomes faster or slower only depends on whether the physical phenomena becomes faster or slower correspondingly.